everybody, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. I believe this message is going to be a powerful blessing in your life. And I'll be right back at the conclusion to pray for you. We declared that this whole month would be a month of prosperity. So that's what I'm talking on today, continuing on our subject. But I titled it this way, Manifesting God's Glory in Every Area of Your Lives. Because how many know that prosperity is not just money? Prosperity is every area of your life, spirit, soul, and body. There's a lot of people that have a lot of money, but they're dying of cancer. Are you with me? Look at Steve Jobs, huh? One of the richest men in the world, head of one of the top technology companies, but all his money could not extend his life another day. Before I get to point number one, let me just say this. The very first miracle that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, the Bible says he turned the water into wine. And it said in doing this miracle, he showed forth his glory. That's his goodness. How many want to see God's goodness in every area of your life? All right, so let's look at the laws that govern prosperity. There's laws that govern this earth, the law of gravity. How many know if I walk off the end of the platform and just step off, I'm going to fall? If I go to the top of the building and just step off the top, I'm going to fall. Isn't that right? How many know you're coming down? Isn't that right? So there's certain laws that are in operation. You can't breathe underwater. Isn't that right? You can't breathe in space. So we've got to find out how things work in order to apply them. First of all, you have to believe that it's God's will for you to prosper. So I use this easy formula. God, good, devil, bad. Amen. Everything the devil does is to destroy, to kill. Everything God does is to bless. Amen. So it's a lie of the enemy that God does not want you to prosper. Many people allow, allow wrong thinking to come into their life and they think that God's trying to teach them a lesson through the sickness. God's trying to teach me a lesson. But if you've been sick for 20 years, how stupid are you? <laughs> so you cannot say that sickness is there to teach you a lesson. Because what parent would take your child and put sickness on your child to teach him a lesson? I mean, if, when Kenneth was a little boy, if I said, now, son, come here, daddy loves you. I want you to know today the lesson we're going to learn is I don't want you to play in the traffic because look what's going to happen. And then I reverse over him twice with the car. And then he's in hospital on a heart lung machine. And then I'm there kissing him, telling him that I love him. But I wanted him to learn not to play in, in the traffic. Takes him eight months to get healed. He's now walking around. But now I'm going to teach him not to play with fire. <laughs> now, I'm using a crazy analogy. You know, then I, do, I heat up the stove, take his hand and put it on the hot, on the, on the red hot plate. Shh, daddy wants to know, he loves you, daddy cares for you, but he wants to teach you not to play with, with hot stuff. Now people laugh, but that's what they blame God for doing. God's teaching me a lesson. And what are you learning? Now God's not teaching a lesson through that. He teaches you through his word. Can you say amen? Or the fact that if you get blessed, then it might ruin you. Prosperity, you know, will ruin you. Well, it does. The Bible says prosperity ruineth the fool. So only fools get ruined. Proverbs 132, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Some people are afraid that if they bless, they would not serve God. So if that's your real problem, come here, I pray that you lose everything. <laughs> Let me pray that you become a homeless person. May stray dogs bite your bones. You know. I mean, part of it thing is that people think that God doesn't really love them. God's against them. And he's not. He's on your side. He's for you. Amen. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to bless you. If you're a parent, you know how you want to bless your children. I mean, it's hard for me even now. You know, I see some things the kids are dealing with 
and then I want to step in. I'll tell my wife, I'll, I'll just go do it. But, you know, you want to do it because they're your children. Amen. Remember this, your life has one purpose, and that's to glorify God. Somebody said, well, God put the sickness on me to bring him glory. That's why I'm deaf in my one ear. Well, hey, come here. We'll pray that you go deaf in the other ear so God can get even more glory. It's just total wrong reasoning. God, obviously God can get glory from a person in the middle of sickness that still served him, that, that obeyed him, and even in the midst of the worst trial, they, they, they served him. So God gets glory from that, but God doesn't get glory from the sickness. Because Jesus came to pay the price for that. The same as God doesn't get glory if you were just walking around as a homeless person. Well, I just believe the Lord wants me to bring glory to him. Remember this. If you're poor, you can't help anybody. You know? Amen? People get mad with us. Well, look at the church. I mean, you people have everything or whatever, and you should be helping the poor. Well, come and have a look. What are we doing for the poor? What are you doing for the poor, you ugly thing? They're doing nothing. God is glorified when his people prosper. The Bible says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Now, here's where I think the problem has arisen is that people have compartmentalized God. So Sunday is about God and then the rest of the week is about me. But when you make God your partner in life, then God becomes God on a Monday. He's God on a Tuesday. He's God on a Wednesday. He's God on a Thursday. He's God on a Friday. He's God at your work. He's God at your play. He's God in your marriage. He's God in your children. He's God with your grandchildren. He's God on your vacation. He's God all the time. Don't compartmentalize your life so that you, oh, well, now this is about the Lord and the rest of the time is about me. No, the whole time is it about, it's about him. On your bed at night, when you lie on your bed at night and you worship him and you praise him. Matthew 7 and verse 7 says, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. He him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom ask if, whom if his son asks bread, he will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, he will give him a serpent? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father which is in heaven give good gifts to them that ask him? So have you asked? Sorry, have you asked? <laughs> You've got to ask. You, ha- you have to ask him. People don't ask him. I, I didn't know you wanted to do that, but you never asked. Ask and you shall receive. James 1, 7, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above. The Father of lights with whom there's no feral, variableness, now the shed of turning. It means God never changes. And every good gift. I don't see sickness being a good gift. I don't see lack and confusion being a good gift. I don't see a mental disease being a good gift. John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for steal, kill, and destroy, but I'm come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Psalm 84 and verse 11, the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing with he will hold from them who walk uprightly. Now, I will tell you this. You can't serve God and the devil. So you can't come on Sunday, you serve God, and then go and club Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then expect to walk in the blessing. Brother Rodney, can you please pray for me? I, 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 I've got arthritis in my legs. I, can't, I, 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 I go to the clubs, I dance, but I can't dance now. And then the Lord heal you. Praise God, I'm back at the clubs every night. And then I must say this because this is very important. Get into the life work that you feel God would have you in or that which is best suited for you. If you're in a job that's a dead end street and you're just working that job because you don't know what else to do, then you need to stop for a moment. We live in the 21st century. There's a lot of things that you can do. You can go down to the bookstore. You can buy 100 books that'll tell you everything you need to know on how to do certain things. Don't get stuck in some nine to five nonsense where you're just punching a card waiting for some check at the end of the month. Because let me tell you, you're never going to see the blessing of God come that way. And if at all possible, always have 
a couple of income streams. So don't base everything on one thing. Amen. Amen. I heard this, who's ever heard of, uh, he's now retired from it, but he, Jay Leno was on the late night and all that. He said from the time he started working, he always had two income and the one he spent, which was the lesser one and the other one he saved. And he used to make at least $30 million a year. So he did that for years and years and years. And one he spent, the other one he saved. So God wants to bless you. God wants to increase you. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. Amen. Proverbs 12, 15. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. Proverbs 13, 16. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Do you see a man diligent and skillful in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Proverbs 24, verses 30 to 34. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little fold in the hands of sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want as an armed man. So poverty comes to everybody that does nothing. You can't be lazy and expect to be blessed. There are too many lazy people in the body of Christ today. Thank you for your response on that. You should look after what you have. Your motor car that you drive, no matter what it looks like, you should clean it. You you shouldn't have trash in the trunk and, you know, Popeye's chicken wrappers in the back of the seat. Hello. No, seriously. You should look after it. Somebody said it's old. It doesn't matter. Look after it. Look after what you've got so when you get it, there's something new that, because some people, no matter what they get new, they're going to break it. And they never look after it. And they never take care of it. Look after what you have and be a faithful steward of what God has given to you. Be unafraid in launching into new ventures at God's dealing and to make the best of your opportunities. Always be looking for opportunities, for increase in your life. Some say, yeah, but what if I tried that business and it fails? Hey, I've tried a lot of things that didn't work out. Are you listening to me? But I'm not going to stop. I've tried a lot of things that did work. I've tried some things that didn't work. But I didn't sit and moan and grumble and gripe and cry. I just moved on to the next thing. Can you say amen? amen? Obviously, my main thing is doing what I'm doing now. It's the ministry. And that's one thing I've never stopped doing. Well, I've seen a lot of ministers that tried to add and they started moving in in another direction and today they don't even have a ministry. But one thing, I always put the ministry first place. Can you say amen? No matter what we do. Proverbs 19 verse 21, many plans are in a man's mind, but the Lord's purpose for him, it's, it's the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. So God's plans for you are better than your plans for you. So don't make plans for you. Find out what God's plan is and then do what God's plan. Don't come to God. Hey, God, I got a plan. Yeah, please bless it. Go to God. Say, God, what's the plan? Get the plan. It'll already be blessed. Amen. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so will your plans be established and succeed, which is quite interesting because a lot of people say, well, I don't want to go do that. Meanwhile, the Lord's dealing with them and now they're vocalizing what they don't want to do. Are you with me? Well, I don't ever want to do that because God's actually dealing with them to do it, but they don't want to do it. But God will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. We're actual fact, you end up having a change of mind. They say, okay, 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 I'll surrender. I'll surrender to the will of God. I'll surrender the plan and purpose of God. And then you do it, and that's when the blessing will come. Can you say amen? Amen. That's why never say never. Never say never. Proverbs 16 and 9, a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. So that's your goal is to find the will of God for your life and then do it. Then follow the business principles taught in Scripture. 
Okay, Romans 12, 9 to 11. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That means your daily business, when you go to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you, must, you are doing it for the Lord. Somebody say, well, I'm just working for the salary. Then. No, you're not. You're working for the Lord. Change the way you see it. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4.11, and that ye study to be quiet and do your own business. So that's scripture. And to work with your own hands. Hold your hands and just wave them at me. Those hands need to be working. As we commanded you, that you walk honestly towards them that are without, that you may lack, have lack of nothing. God doesn't want you to lack anything. Somebody said, I need a helping hand. You have hands on your own body. They will help you. See, we've got to break this whole society that's dependent upon the government. Oh, if they only give me this, if only somebody give me a hand, if only somebody, uh, oh, then you just depend on everybody. What are you going to do? You'll never find out what you can do if you're always relying upon somebody else to do it for you. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 9. He that hath the bound of an eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor which you can't do that if you're not blessed. Amen. Then do unto others as you have them do unto you. Luke 6 and 31. As you would have that men should do unto you, do also to them likewise. I knew a man that was in the television business, television repair business. And, you know, I was around at his house and he said, man, I've got to go do this deal quickly. He said, if you ride with me, I'm just going to run in there. And he came out and he had some cash with him and he put it down. He said, that was quick. I said, what did you do? He said, well, he said, there really wasn't anything wrong, but I charged them for a new part on their computer, I mean, on their, on their television, and he said, you know, they don't know, and I made a thousand bucks. And I said, that is terrible. You're a Christian, and you're stealing from people. He said, it was just a loose wire. I just soldered the wire, but I charged them for another whole part. I said, that's just terrible. How do you even sleep at night? How can you go around to somebody's television to repair it it's a loose wire, you sold to the wire and then charge them for another whole part. He said, well, the visit, I only made like 120 bucks, but, you know, with the part, I said, come on, man, you can't expect to walk in the blessing of God. How would you like somebody to come fix your television and do that? And when you look at people as a means to an end, where you're just going to use them to get what you want, your life will be shallow. It will always be empty. And whatever you got anyway, you'll end up losing. I'm going to tell you right now, you'll end up losing. <laughs> 1 Peter 5 and verse 1, The elders which among you I exhort, who am also... An elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also partakers of his glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you. I say this even for the ministry. Take therefore oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither being as lords over God's heritage, but the examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. So that means every minister is going to be held responsible for what they've done with the sheep. So on that day, for some, it's not going to be a good day. Are you listening to me? Do not take advantage of others. Don't misrepresent, exaggerate, false advertising or dishonesty and covetous. Covetousness is when you want what somebody else has. And don't misrepresent. That's why I'm always... I hold people to account, especially when it comes to business. If you promise, you better deliver it. Otherwise, I promise you, I'm going to put a pop knot in your tail. Right. Don't you tell me the thing does that and it doesn't do that. No, no, no. It, 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 you better. It better happen. Let me tell you. I'm coming at you. Amen. I remember, you know, years ago, uh, I got involved in a business situation where I became a partner in this company, 
And I had on paper about, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but it would have been equivalent to $800 million worth of, of shares in this corporation. And uh, so I was looking at this whole thing, and we began an all-night prayer meeting, and I was praying because I vowed a billion dollars to go into the gospel. And so I thought, okay, this is the Lord, you know, this is God. God's bringing it. I mean, that's 800 million. We're not far from the billion. Hallelujah. And we began an all-night prayer meeting, and I'm praying. And I, in my spirit, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. And I, I believe it was Pastor Eric. I walked up to him and said, I, I can't do this business. I, I just, I'm going to get out. And it didn't cost me anything to get into it. So I called the, 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 the president of the company. I said, I want you to come down, please. And he came come into my office and I had all the shares there. And I turned and I pushed them towards him. And I, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to give them back to you. He said, what? I said, look, I can't be involved right now. Yeah, but you're walking away from hundreds of millions of dollars. I said, then I'm walking away from hundreds of millions of dollars. I said, if the Lord blesses you and you want to serve the ministry, that's fine. But for me, I have to walk away right now and I'm giving it to you. And he got mad. He, he was like irate with me. But you know, the guy's face, I mean, he's in penitentiary now. He's in jail. He's probably been there for eight years already. And I know what he would have done. He would have set me up. I probably would have gone to prison with him. He would have set me up because that's what they normally do. They set up people as a straw man. Are you with me? And it's just that I did not have that good feeling about it. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. So on paper, like you're insane. You're giving up all that. I'm giving up nothing. I'm giving up prison. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who wants to give up prison? I mean, I'll give up prison. Take your shares. Get out of here. And you don't even have to give an explanation. Well, he did push me. He pushed me to the point where I gave him an explanation. He said, so why are you out? I said, okay, you got four things on the table here and none of them are yours. Well, number one comes from somebody else. Number two comes from somebody else. Number three comes from somebody else. Number four comes from somebody else. And you put it together and put it together as your own company as though it came from you. So you are lying and you're misrepresenting yourself. And here's what he was gonna do. He was gonna take the company launch it and then take it public, put it on the stock exchange and then just sell it and walk away. So I said, in actual fact, you're selling stuff that's bogus. It's bogus and you're using me as a pastor to sanction what you're doing. And you're not doing it. And the next thing I knew, I got a call from the FBI. They wanted to know about him. Hmm? I said, do you know this man? Yeah. I did, I, I lost $200,000 myself. So they asked me how much money you took from me. I told them. Okay, you know, that's why I said I've lost some things over the time. But the Lord has protected me and got me out. Can you say amen? So don't ever, don't ever go against what God's telling you, even though it looks like it's huge. Just walk away. Just walk away. Can you say Amen. So don't take advantage, say this, I will not take advantage of others. I will not misrepresent. I will not exaggerate. I will not use false advertising. I will not work in dishonesty. And covetous will have, covetousness will have no place in my life. Say, so I don't care how people are blessed. I will not covet what they have. All right, then have faith in God. Amen. Mark 11, 22, 26. And Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in thy heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things ever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When do you have them? When you believe you receive them. So and that's when you receive them. And that's when you have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. 
And then what does Hebrews eleven six 6 say? Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. So God is looking for you to believe him. It's like the Lord saying, come on, what can you believe me for in 2017? Come on. If you aim at nothing, you're bound to hit it. If, who's believing God just to survive this year? Who's believing in the Lord to thrive this year? Okay. And then we come to seeking the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Luke 12, 15. He said, take heed, be, beware of covetousness for man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he has. So it doesn't matter, you own houses and cars and stocks and shares. All that means absolutely nothing. Somebody called me, a minister called me who had to go and do his, uh, you know, um, well, his will. And he said, you know, I'd found out that everything I have, I'm worth like a quarter of a million dollars. And I just said to him, I said, look, you can, I said, you can, you have to look at the 40 years of your ministry and the riches that's laid up for you in heaven. You can't count your riches by what the bank tells you. Are you with me? Your, your, your worth is not what they tell you. They couldn't replace you for two trillion. Are you with me? So people count their worth by what it says on paper, but that's not what you worth. You're priceless. For everything else, is MasterCard. You're priceless. Come on. The real value is in the person. It's not in the things that they have. Cars come and cars go. How many bought a new car and then was old? How many bought a new house and it was old? How many bought new clothes and then it was old? Everything you get is going to get old. Go to an estate. If you want to go to, go down to West Palm Beach or Palm Beach area and go to an estate sale of a multi-millionaire or whatever and go see the stuff that they bought that paid two, three hundred grand for and you pick it up for five thousand dollars. It's worth absolutely nothing. That's not your worth. A man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. I was watching an interview with the actor, Jerry Lewis, you know, the, uh, the comedian, you know, many movies and films. And you know, he was talking and then he said, and he started talking about death and he said, I'm afraid to die. Here's a man that has everything in the natural, but he's afraid to die. He's afraid to die. What should a prophet a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul. Matthew 10, 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loseth his life for my sake and the gospel shall find it. Matthew 19, 27, 30, he answered Peter and said, behold, Peter said, we, behold, we have forsaken all and we followed you. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said, and verily, verily, I send to you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you shall also sit upon 12 thrones, thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone that has forsaken houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit it everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Amen. So just remember, there's what you'll be rewarded with in this life but then there's what you're gonna be rewarded in the life to come. So that's why what you wanna do is make your life count now for eternity. There's a lot of people that have a lot here, but when they get up there, they have nothing. They'll be saved, but they have nothing to show for their life here on the earth because their life was all about them and very little about the kingdom of God, very little about the lost, very little about, about the poor and those that are needy. Important, huh? Amen. Amen. What is going to count a hundred years from today? 
Then no matter how the Lord blesses you, and you can start right now, even in the process, you're giving to others. Be a blessing to others everywhere you go. Give and it shall be given unto you, Luke 6, 38. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give in your bosom. For the measure you, you meet with all, it shall be measured back to you again. So be a blessing. Give. So plant. The message that we teach on giving is not about an offering. That's just what you do to the Lord. The message we teach on giving is your daily lifestyle of giving. Amen. Giving on a Monday, giving on a Tuesday, giving on a Wednesday, giving on a Thursday. And don't, somebody said, well, I'll wait for the Lord to tell me. You don't wait for the Lord to tell you, just give. Well, you can only get a reward off of what God tells you. No, you can get a reward from giving. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. <laughs> Proverbs 28, verse 8. He that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will have pity on the poor. You want me to read it one more time? He that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for the him that will have pity for the poor. That means those of you that have pity on the poor, what they are doing out there will come to you. Are you listening to me? Proverbs nineteen seventeen: He that pitieth on the poor lendeth the Lord, and the Lord, will, which he has given, will pay him again. Proverbs eleven twenty four to 25. There is that scattereth, and yet it increaseth. Increases, and there is that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul, now we're not talking about the liberals, you know, like what's been, <laughs> but okay, the generous, we've got to do generous, okay, because the, the liberals we're dealing with today are not generous. The liberal, the liberal, <laughs> oh God, help us. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered himself. So your life has purpose for the glory of God. Can you say amen? amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, where they, therefore you eat or drink, and whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And then the last one is giving to God. Of course, we, we teach this here, but I'll just run through the scriptures. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your substance, with all the first fruits of your increase. Your bonds will be filled with plenty, and your precious shall burst forth with new wine. Malachi 3, 10. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse. There may be meat in my house. Prove me, and now I will say the Lord of hosts, if I not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there will not be room enough to receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And you don't have to be rich to give to God. You can start where you are and you prosper as you go. People say, how are you? Say, I'm prospering. Say, how are you doing? I'm, I'm prospering. I'm. And you're going to see the glory of God in every area of your life. Spiritually. Spiritually. Peace. Joy. All of heaven's blessings. Spiritually. Then you're going to see God's glory manifest mentally. You'll have peace of mind, no confusion, no anxiety. You won't lie awake at night worrying, peaceful sleep. Your mind will have creativity, creative thoughts. No problem will come on you that you won't know how to get out. God will bring you out of everything. Physically, your physical body. Amen. Isn't this awesome? So the Lord is with you. And this is for every one of you. If it wasn't, I would tell you. It's possible for me to preach something, I live, that's not available for you. And obviously God will bless you differently because you're doing different things than what I'm doing. But the Lord nonetheless will bless you. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This young lady right there, yeah. Put the glasses. Come here. Lift your hands. That which has plagued your family and even going back to your grandparents will not plague you. 
that even from this day, the power of God comes upon you with a total release. And what God's going to do in your life will shock family, friends, loved ones. You will do what's never been done before. And they'll know that it's God. Jesus. It'll happen. You watch. Get ready. Get ready. You know, people say, well, you know, my family, this has just not been that way. I mean, I can, I can go back. I can take you back to South Africa. I can tell you how they, they talked. All of my family, I can tell you how they talked. And I can remember as a little kid saying, I'm going to break this thing. I was like seven, eight, nine years old. I'm going to break this thing. I'm going to break. I'm going to come out. Because a lot of them found themselves in the place of talking. We, we'd like to do this. We wish we could do this. So you sit around talking. We wish we could. I sit under my breath. I'm going to do that. I can remember telling my mother and father. I told my mother, I said, I'm taking you to America. No, you're not. I'm not going to America. I'll never go to America. Oh, yeah, I'm taking you to America. I'm not. I'm not going. Dad and I were born in Africa. We're going to die in Africa. No, I knew. I knew I broke the whole thing for the family. I broke it. I broke it totally open. You know, you can say, well, this is the way things have done. You can break whatever's happened. And I believe God's going to use you as a sign and a wonder. That's going to shock people. They're going to be astounded. They'll talk about you. They'll say, I tell you, didn't he do good? Didn't they just do good? It's all because of God. All because of his hand and his blessing on your life. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, you might say, my grandfather died of a heart condition. My father died of a heart condition. Well, you're not going to die of a heart condition. We break that off of you in Jesus' name. Say there's a history of suicide in my family. Well, guess what? It stops with you. There'll never be suicide in your life in Jesus' name. I have a family history of my family going to the mental institution. Well, guess what? It's broken today and you will never end up in a mental institution. Come on, you break the cycle. You break the cycle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No car accidents, no car wrecks. No bankruptcies. Listen, I want everyone that comes here from the inner city, I want them off of food stamps. I want to get them off of food stamps. I want to get them in their own businesses. Are you listening to me? You can't break free living under a government slavery system. You can, and that's what it is. It's a slave system. You can't you can, you can be prosperous in that regard. That's why the kids are going off and running drugs, because they can make more money off of drugs. Who wants food stamps when you can sell drugs? Come on, we're going to break that thing off of our people. Come on, we're going to bust that thing in the hip. We're going to break it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And what you don't know, we can teach you. What you don't know, we can help you with. We can show you. There's things you can learn. That's what the church is here for. Let me close with this. If you don't want help, I mean, if you're satisfied with where you are, then we can't help you. When you're desperate about where you are, then what you do, you say, please help me, teach me. It's not about somebody just giving you the money because if we give you the money, you go right back to the problem next week. It's about giving you the solution. Can you say amen? amen. And I know people say, well, you can't promise this to everybody. Yes, I can't promise it to everybody because God's word is to everybody. God's, not, God's word is not just to a few people. 
If you're stuck in a rut right now, then you're gonna come out of that rut. Who feels like in your, in your job or whatever, you're stuck in a rut, whatever? Put your hand up. And if one of our pastors raise a hand, you're about to be launched into full-time ministry. No, <laughs> I'm just teasing, just teasing. You'll find yourself landing a church quicker than you could say hippopotamus. I'm telling you right now. I, I always check when I say that. <laughs> I'll call you out and prophesy over you right now. You're about to get launched. <laughs> Notice when I said that, I quickly looked around to see whose hand went up. But who feels like you're stuck in a rut right now? Come on. You feel like even your job, stand up, stand up, come on. Everybody that feels like they're stuck in a rut, come on. Come on, we're going to break this thing, come on. We're going to break this thing. We're going to break this thing right now. We're going to break it right now. We're going to break it right now. We're going to break it right now. I want all of you that are sitting to put your hands on them. Come on, we're going to pray. Turn around, put your hands on them. Come on, let's pray. You're not in a rut, you're in Bible school. I'm going to lay hands on you. It's called Bible school. It's not a rut. Get us. Jesus. Father, we pray for miracles to take place in the life of every person right now. In Jesus' name, break them out of this rut that they find themselves in. And I thank you that 2017 shall be the year where they fulfill your plan and your purpose for their life in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now. 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 In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it now. Broken. Broken. We thank you for it now. We thank you for it now. We thank you for it now. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you that are Bible students, you're not in a rut. You're in school. <laughs> Sit down. Because the rut is about to get deeper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, say this on me. Say, I'm coming out. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want everybody to bow your heads across this place. If you would, please. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to give an invitation here this morning. Maybe you came here today. You've never given your life to Jesus. You've never said, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior. Friend, I want to ask you this question. If you died today, where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. I want you to know that he loves you and he stands with arms right open. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and have laden. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He calls you. Will you surrender to him? Will you say, come? Come, Lord Jesus. Take full control of my life today. I'm tired of going my own way, but I want to go your way. I want your purpose and your plan. He loves you so much. It's about surrender today. It's about surrender today. Secondly, maybe you've come to this place. You gave your life to the Lord, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You've lost your peace. You've lost the joy that you once had. There was a time when you were radically on fire for God, but something happened that rocked your world. Maybe it started as it always does with something hidden in the heart. Unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, the hidden things that clog the heart of man. I want you to know he's going to take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. Today is your day of freedom and deliverance. Today he will do his work on the inside of you if you'll surrender to him. He loves you. Maybe no one knows about these things. Your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, 
Your pastor, no one knows, but you know. But today's your day to be free. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's something outward that all can see. And the devil used against you to keep in a place of guilt and condemnation. You feel like God will never use you because of events that have transpired in your life. But today you say, I'm coming back. God is a God of a new beginning and God is a God of a, of a fresh start, a second chance if you'll come and surrender to him. He loves you. He loves you so very much. He loves you so very much. Maybe it's not hidden or outward as we described. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life. You were going along. You were doing great. Then out of the blue, something came like a Mack truck from hell and hit you, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, a loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. I even feel to say this right now, it could even be a trap that the enemy set for you and you fell right in it. It came as a sudden thing. And you don't even know how to come out of it. But I want you to know the Lord can bring you right out and deliver you today that this thing is broken forever. He loves you. And then lastly, you've come to this place, you do love the Lord, that's not even a question, but you have a constant doubt and it bothers you between your head and your heart. The devil's always lying to you, telling you that you're not saved. But today you wanna know, you wanna make sure that you're a child of God. If this is you and you fit into any one of these three categories that I've just mentioned, and you want to be prayed for today, I want you to surrender. Do not leave it for another week. This very day, your life could be required of you. I want you right where you are to quickly just put your hand up and say, pray for me right now. God bless you, 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 God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Yes, sir, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, yes. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Yes, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Yes, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, yes. Once you've raised it, you can put it down. I want you to look at me now, please. In this section here, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer. I'm going to pray. You didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included right now. Put your hand up right now. Say, include me. Quickly. Bless you, bless you. Yes, yes, yes. This section here. Put your hand up right now. God bless you, God bless you. This section. You didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Put your hand up right now. God bless you, God bless you. This section. Put your hand up. This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. God bless you. What about this section? You didn't raise your hand, want to be included. Put your hand up now. Now we're going to pray together. I want everyone that raised your hand on those invitations to stand to your feet all across the building. Stand. Everyone that raised your hand, stand. Stand right now. Stand right now. Stand right now. We're going to pray. If you by yourself, bring your personal belongings and come and stand around the altar. We're going to pray. Come. 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 Come now. To follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The, the world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The 
the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. I want you to look at me right now. If you mean busy with God, God means busy with you. You might say, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. No, I don't. It's really none of my business. But I know what Jesus has done and where he's been. And what Jesus has done and where he's been cancels out what you've done and where you've been if you believe today. We can't buy it. We can't earn it. We sure don't deserve it. But he gives it to us anyway. So how do we receive it? We humble ourselves. And we accept it by faith. I want you to close your eyes and raise your right hand to heaven and pray this out loud. Believe it in your heart. Say it with your mouth. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead, I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'm saved. I'm forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now lift both hands and just thank him right now. Just thank him right now. Now, Father, I pray that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit, that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So you want to hear the good news now. You want to hear the good news now. As a servant of the Most High God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of the Word of God, and by the awesome power of the Holy Spirit, I tell every single one of you right now, your sins are forgiven you. Right now. In Jesus' name. Is that good? Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer as I prayed with them, that means you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We want to hear from you. Go to our website at revival.com and you can email us at prayer request. Tell us that you watch the YouTube channel. We really love to interact with you and send you something that's going to help you in your walk with Christ. And then of course, you can continue to watch every service is taken and uploaded. Either we live on YouTube or you can watch it on a rerun as we edit the messages down. And I pray that this YouTube channel is a special blessing to you. I'd love to hear from you. I want to interact with you. You can follow me on Facebook, on my Twitter account, my Periscope account, Instagram, whatever. Uh, All the links are found on revival.com, which is the best place to go. So let's just pray over you right now that the Lord would touch you and empower you and then become proactive in the kingdom that God use you in a powerful way to bring in the harvest of souls. And I pray for His anointing to touch you. Father, touch every one of our friends watching on YouTube. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact their generation, we pray. Heal, restore, renew, revive them even now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and interact with us. We want to hear from you. We love you. If you'd like to be a part together with us, then support this ministry and so a seed, revival.com. There's a drop down box, online giving, or there's an address on the screen. You can send a love gift to our ministry. Help be a part together with us in the Great Awakening as we travel across America and around the world, lighting fires, 
So we'd love to hear from you and your financial support is greatly appreciated. From all of us here, we love you. Thank you for being a part 